Hello and welcome to part two of my talk about archetypes. In the last one I talked about cars and chairs and crowns and dictionaries and old psychiatrists and stuff, but now I want to talk about one of the 11 types of archetypal characters. Before I introduce this one, I want to say that there is no definitive list of archetypal characters. Jung put some up, other writers have tweaked them, this is actually just my collection of the ones that I think are most useful, the ones I'm most familiar with. So if something's missing from this list, it doesn't mean it's not an archetype. If something's on this list, it generally means other people are talking about it, I don't think I invented any here, but these are my choice of 11 archetypes, so don't get too hung up on it. If you see other lists other places, listen to them too. So let's start with what I think is a, a nice solid beginning. What do these guys have in common? For those of you, well, I hope most of you guys know that this is Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. This is of course Albus Dumbledore from Harry Potter. This is Gandalf from um, Lord of the Rings. I want to say Morpheus but I'm not sure. It's certainly that dude from the Matrix. All of these characters have something in common. Even though they're from you know different decades uh, and there are characters like this going back hundreds and hundreds of years, what these guys have in common is that they are all examples of the old man wizard. So let's look at what these guys have in common because I hope that as I unfold this you'll begin to see that these are basically the same character. First of all, the old man wizard is old. He's a, he's a kind of grandfather figure, although he plays a kind of fatherly figure um, to other characters. A kind of grandfather father figure, it's not particularly important which, although he's generally older. He is invariably wise, which is to say he has seen a lot of the world and he understands a lot of the world. And Dumbledore's a fantastic example of this. But it's also worth keeping in mind, wise doesn't mean cannot make a mistake, or is not sometimes foolish. Because very often the old man wizard, um, you know, thinks that he knows too much, is a bit, is a bit arrogant, a bit sort of overly confident. But that's another story. Part of what the old man wizard does is that he opens up a larger world for our hero. In Gandalf here, he takes the hobbits out of Hobbiton and takes them on an adventure all the way across Middle Earth. But this happens in all kinds of films, not just um, fantasy films. You know, you might have the old cop showing the new cop how the system really works. Um, you might literally have a grandfather showing a grandson what the world's really about. Now, often, I would say 90% of the time, the old man wizard is in fact a man. There's no reason why it couldn't be a woman, and there are some notable examples of where this character is in fact female, but often it's a man. Another telling thing about the old man hero is that he can't be there for the last bit of the story. He has to be in some way removed so that the hero can act alone. So if you look back through these characters, you know, um, it's true of Obi-Wan, it's true of Gandalf, it's true of Dumbledore, it's true of Morpheus, um, it's often true of the old man hero. So his central question, and it is almost always a he, but it doesn't have to, is can I teach this boy or girl? You know, can I pass on what I need to pass on in the time that I've got left? So, what I will leave you with is the question of, can you think of any other more any other old man wizards in stories? And I bet you can. And I'll leave you with that thought and come back soon with the next archetype.